Now for somebody who we uh, are looking forward to checking in with. He left Preston for Hibs back in July. He's having a very good first season in uh, Scottish football in his 30-odd appearances. Seven goals, nine assists. And at the weekend, you would have seen he scored twice in the Tynecastle Derby. Hibs' first away win to Hearts in six years. Uh, second goal in particular was a beauty. Mulraney there to win the ball and it's neat and tidy from Canberry to Mallon. And It's simply a brilliant goal, a team goal, well worked, but what a finish from Hogan. Passes, he follows, that is a brilliant finish, that really is. Left footed, into the corner, could say maybe against the run of play. But what a goal and what an impact Hogan, that man has had on this tie. Yes indeed, Daryl Horgan, hello. Joe, how are you? Good. That must have felt very sweet. Yeah, it was uh, it was unbelievable to be honest with you. Obviously, such a big game for uh, for everyone involved, and to get the to get the two goals was, was special. All right. And what a second goal as well. I mean, the first goal was no bad uh, thing either, but the second goal was a beautiful bit of football, neat and tidy. The commentator said, but real quality as well. And then the finish. Yeah, lovely kind of team goal. You know, just mm. real sharp in around the box, and you know, fell to me and. Thankfully, I went in when they headed it. Yeah, so um, I guess we just wanted to check in and see how things are going. From afar, it looks like they're going well. 30-odd appearances, I mentioned beforehand there. You've scored goals, you've made assists, you're getting uh, football. How are you finding it? Yeah, good, really, really enjoying it now. Um, obviously, the the last couple of months have been have been a bit better. We've been on a, a mm. brilliant run. Um, kind of kicked right up the table. We were, I think, when the new manager came in, eleven points behind Hearts. So to claw them back and jump over them, going into the split was was brilliant, you know. And obviously, new manager coming in, what what was the aim for everyone? And it was to get in that top six. And mm. thankfully, we did that. And now we're going to have to try push on, keep away from Hearts and Cash Kilmarnock and Aberdeen if we can. Yeah. So uh, if you go back to your reasons for moving, it was fairly clear you wanted first team football. At Preston, things had gone well initially under Simon Grayson. I think you played about 20 times looking back through the stats. And then under Alex Neil, I think of your of all your starts, maybe just two of them weren't off the bench. And in fairness, he said he was sorry to see you go. Maybe the way Preston played under him didn't suit you. But ultimately, you wanted to play first team football. Yeah, look, ideally you want to play as much as you possibly can. You know, it's a short career and, you know, the last thing I wanted to do uh, was kind of sit in stands and, you know, just become a lad who's just going to train, you know, and kind of not, not be not be a part of it. Like, and um, obviously, look, I had a great time. A great times at Preston last, last year was difficult, though, you mm. know. You want to, be, want to be a big part of things and play as much as you possibly can. And unfortunately, that didn't really happen, you know, and... The lads done really well. It was difficult for me to get in, and you know the time was time was right to move. And you know, thankfully, Hibs came in and uh, made a made a good offer for us. And I was I was delighted to to go and get up there and have an opportunity to get in a, in a first team. And thankfully, I have. What was it about the Alex Neal system that mightn't have suited you? Um, I think I think he saw me more as kind of an out of the touchline winger, one on one with defenders, getting at them crosses, things like that. Where mm. I think he wanted lads kind of playing in them inside forward roles nearly, you know, and um, I think he just, he thought he had players who were more suited to that, you know. Um, he played he played Shawnee out there quite a bit and, yeah, uh, yeah Callum Robinson, you know, and they, there was just a few players who were ahead of me and, you know, he probably just, as he said, he just thought they were better players and sometimes that's just the way it goes, you know, and not much you can do, you just get the head down, work away, but mm. maybe sometimes he had his mind made up and, and that was it, you know, and I've absolutely nothing against the guy. Sure. Um, he's done a really, really good job there. So, um, you know, it was, t- it was just time for me to go. And as I said, thankfully, Hibs came in. And how do you see yourself as a player? Because I suspect if Alex Neal saw your two goals at the weekend, then, you know, there's a touch of inside forward off them, I would have thought. Yeah, look, look maybe. It's hard, it's hard to judge. I, I, like, I like to think I could do a, a bit, you know, and mm. kind of adapt to any formation. Um, as much as I possibly can, really, you know. Um, so I suppose the way the new manager has us playing here now, it's kind of a 
you know, four three three or a four four two, but he wants, you know, centre forwards in the box, like and you know he wants his wingers in the box and in and around the box be an option to either score goals or, you know, create and so that's that's the aim for me and mm. that's what I've been trying to do since he's come in. Sounds quite enjoyable, you know, getting in around the box, attacking football, scoring goals, that's right up your street, I would have thought. Yeah, definitely, you know, it's um it's it's been really good, you know, the it's a good structure to the way we we're playing, you know, we're we're solid from the front right the way back and you know, we're creating chances and scoring goals. So uh you know, long may I continue. What were your options in July, Daryl? Was it just Hibbs who were in for you or was there other other interest? Um there was a bit bits and pieces. To be honest, Hibbs had come in early doors, you know, kinda May, June time when I thought there would be I'd be able to get to leave, you know. But um it looked like it wasn't going to happen. You know, obviously I played the first game for Preston this year and then it just kind of, it all opened up where there was bits and pieces happening but I was kind of in, only interested in Hibs then. You know, there was a couple other clubs come in but I said, look, uh, see if Hibs, they said to me, agent, see if Hibs are still still available for mm. me to go and he went up and straight away, yeah, brilliant and, you know, got it done as quick as possible. So you had no qualms whatsoever about leaving English football? You weren't desperate to stay in the Championship at all costs? No, no. Well, like, you know, I was kind of looking at do I go somewhere where I'll uh, maybe be in a similar position, you know, where someone's just taking a punt at late in the window mm. and you're kind of coming in maybe as cover to the lads they're already happy with and have there. You've not done a pre-season with them or are you going to a club that want you mm. from from the off where there's an opportunity to play, you know. And obviously I was still gonna, I'd still miss pre-season the lads had gone on a great European run, but I was kind of coming in knowing I was wanted there, you know, and uh, that I wasn't kind of last last day of the window, bargain bucket, who, mm. who can we get, who's available. So it was one of them where I just felt it was it was a good good opportunity and a good uh, good place for me to go. And, you know, it's, so far it's, it's gone quite well. What was your relationship like with Neil Lennon? Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty good, you know. Um, he's, uh, I suppose, just kind of a... Was the best way. Slightly different uh, ideas between himself and the new manager now, but uh, you know he wanted to play attacking football on the ground, then um, get forward, score goals, create chances. Uh, I suppose my biggest issue, I, I, I he more saw me as a as a ten really. Right. You know, I as much as you, you'd like to try your best in every role you possibly can. Um, sometimes it didn't it didn't work. I wasn't as used to it as I'd like to have been. Mm. You know, and uh, sometimes it went well, sometimes it didn't, but. Um, and then I suppose off for whatever reason, uh, the results didn't go our way. Whether you know it was ourselves, the players, and the manager, everyone kind of has to take a bit of a bit of the brunt on that one. You know, um, it just for whatever reason didn't click, and unfortunately he had to, he moved on, and mm. you know the managers come in and we've hit the ground running since then. Yeah, you sure have. Chemistry, especially when you're talking about that many different people, is a complicated thing. And there were reports of Lennon involved in heated exchanges, and I'm sure that happens in football. All the time. Did he leave uh, under yeah, a bit of a cloud, not, or, or how, how did the, how was that departure handled? I suppose you always kind of you're always leaving under a cloud. That's sure. just the way football is. You know, it's never really, very, or very very rarely going to be an amicable um, an amicable thing. Mm. No one wants to leave their job. You know, so especially job he's been there for obviously two and a half years. But look, obviously there was a few disagreements and discussions, but nothing that you wouldn't have seen before. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. Like there was, you know. A, Obviously, we had been beaten by Motherwell the week uh, leading up to it, and he wasn't happy. No one was happy. So mm. everyone kind of had had words. It wasn't anything that I hadn't seen before. I guess in a similar way to your experience with Simon Grayson and then Alex Neal, there's always that worry as a professional footballer about the new man coming in. So uh, Paul Heckingbottom wasn't heralded as a massive appointment for Hibs by any means. He's done brilliantly. I mean, six wins, two draws. You've gone from eighth to fifth in the Premiership, as we're saying. When do you get an early uh, feeling that, that this guy rates you and likes you? Uh, he actually had tried to take me to Barnsley before. That's a good start. Um, <laughs> yeah, when I went to Preston, so that was a, that was a decent start. And I had I'd been on trial at Barnsley when he was kind of he was head of youth over there. So I kind of our pass had crossed once or twice. So I knew there was that he he had rated me at one stage. Obviously, I had to. Show him I was still at that level that I that I was, you sure. know. And thankfully, he's, he's shown a lot of faith to me. He's put me in, played me pretty much every game, you know. Mm. So um, it's it's been really really good. It's amazing what confidence does, isn't it? And knowing that your manager has confidence in you, we see it in players all the time. 
the same player, same ability, same fitness levels, but just the belief of a manager can transform what you're able to do. Yeah, it's frightening, isn't it? You know, for whatever reason, I really, really don't understand it. It's just confidence is, is huge. The more, the longer I'm in the game, the more I realise how important it is. Like, you know, when someone, I suppose, that has that belief that, you know, give you that freedom to go out and do, play your game and, you know, have the confidence in your game, then for whatever, you, you get that extra yard quicker, mm. you know, you get that bit sharper, things fall for you in the box, you know. I it, think probably you, you, know? you don't second guess yourself as much. You're not possibly, worried about yeah, every possibly, decision, you know, what does he think of what I'm doing right now kind of thing. Yeah, that's possibly it as well, you know, you're, you just play kind of more off instinct maybe and mm. I suppose that's probably the best way to do it anyway, isn't it? Do you work on your confidence in any psychological way, any techniques? Do you do, you do anything to work on your confidence? Uh, no, not, not particularly, right. you know, um, there's a there's a, a fella at the, at the club, you know, who's a kind of sports psychologist, I, I chat to him a bit, you know, and it, every now and then, like, and uh, there's one thing he's kind of said to me there a couple of months ago that kind of stuck with me, you know, kind of be the be the grey man, you know, have no kind of emotion mm. when it comes to it, and that was, a, that was a big thing for me, you know, especially... I get kind of wrapped up in it at times, you know. I get very, uh, very frustrated with myself playing. So um, to be able to have that, you know, kind of don't lose the rag, mm. don't lose the head. It's mm. only a mistake. It happens. Don't worry about it. It'll come again. Mm. So things like that. That that was a good kind of indicator for me, you know, to that he had seen that and that it was something I should do. And have so, you yeah, have, was, uh, have you noticed you know, your, have you noticed yourself going a little bit easier on yourself during games? Maybe not going easier, but I, I, get, I switch off it quicker. Okay. You know, I, I still get frustrated, but it doesn't last. Whereas it might have affected the next thing I would do in a game or the thing after, mm. and I could build up. Whereas now it's just it's done. Maybe get frustrated, but you forget about it then and just continue going. Tell us about the move to Edinburgh. It's a beautiful city. Oh, beautiful place. I love it up here. Yeah, it's people. Scottish people are very, very similar to the Irish. You know, it's uh, very, very friendly, and you know, obviously coming up. Um, you're moving into a whole new place, whole new team, but the lads have been unbelievable. They're great, great group of lads there, and uh, makes that that bit easier as well. You know, obviously you're moving the the misses and the little fell up, so it's a, it's a big change for everyone. But it's been brilliant. And have you gone in around the city centre, or are you living a bit further out, or, or what's the setup like? Uh, we're we're living a bit further out. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not built for uh, for living in the cities. <laughs> you know, I don't like got that much hustle and bustle. Like um, live a little bit out, little town. Um, about 20 minutes from Edinburgh, like, right. you know, so that suits me down to the ground. It's a nice place. Again, neighbours all very, very friendly and you're not too far from the city if everyone are going. Yeah, uh, he's beautiful. I had the um, the fortune or the misfortune. I was actually on a stag uh, this weekend, so I got a sense of the excitement about the Derby game and people were really mm. into it, but, uh, geez, it's a beautiful spot when you venture in around the castle and that old part of the city. Oh, yeah, the whole city, you know, you, anytime... I go in, you see just this new building that you haven't seen before. Yeah. Geez, that's that's an, that's unbelievable, you know. And obviously, as you said, the castle, the old town, everything. It's a really, really nice place. Kind of, we were here around the obviously it was the Christmas time, the Christmas markets and things like that, and mm. it was um, it was unreal. It's important, isn't it? Like, I mean, you need your you need your other half, you need your uh, child to be happy. Like, if they're not enjoying it, then it's very difficult for you, I would think, to do your best stuff. Yeah, well, obviously, grand when you're you're you know, you're single and you're that, but when you've a when you've a family to worry about, you know, you have to make sure they're they're pretty happy. To be fair to Donna, she's brilliant. You know, she goes kind of she goes wherever, um, wherever's coming up. You no, know, any move in the summer, she was saying, right, we're going. It doesn't matter where. Great. But just luckily that Edinburgh's a lovely place and it suited everyone really. How have you found the standard of football in comparison with Championship level? Um. It's one of them. It's quite. It's quite difficult to judge. Obviously, people have asked the same, but you know, the League of Ireland, to whatever else. Mm. But it's very, very difficult to really judge. You know, um, you know, there's definitely obviously you've your, you your Celtics who would probably be a cut above the Championship. You know, and maybe there's a few teams that will compete at it, and you're probably thinking the rest of maybe compete League One. Mm. You know, <sighs> potentially, and you you really don't know. Mm. Uh, you wouldn't have said. You know, many championship teams would have beaten, you know, Astera Striplers like the boys did this year. So it's 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 hard to know at times. Mm. You know, sometimes. Uh, but uh, the standards good. You know, the games are very, very enjoyable, very fast pace. You know, kind of relentless, mm. kind of non-stop pace to the games. I found, and um, you know, they've been 
the difficult difficult games, you know, you've, you've no easy one. Mm. You know, you could, uh, like, I suppose, similar in a way to, to the championship, you could play a team bottom of the table and, you know, you get turned over very, very easily if you're not at it. Yeah, no doubt. So, um, uh, Scottish football in the headlines is uh, a good bit this year, sectarianism uh, bubbling away as it does and as, as, as it has done for a long time. Uh, it's mm-hmm. certainly not as intense in Edinburgh, clearly, as it is in Glasgow, but you must have encountered it across the season. Is, is it a regular theme at games that you're playing in? Yeah, look, I suppose any kind of you know discrimination is just, it's just not on, no matter what. You know, it's 2019, 2019 now, like, where... I thought we're past the Stone Ages. I think one of the lads there, I've just seen on you know Sky Sports News, got racial abuse in the derby. Like, which just is a disgrace. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, what creed, race, anything you are. Like, you should never ever get that kind of abuse, and it's not right. You know, and um, to be honest, was I that in the? Sorry, I didn't see that. Was that in the Tynecastle derby that he was abused, or? Yeah, yeah. I oh, really? That there, we we actually haven't been in. We've had a couple of days off, but right. I just see it on Sky Sports. You know, and obviously the two clubs have come out and they've. They've kind of, uh, they've obviously condemned said, it, yeah. Condemned it, yeah. That's what I was looking for, yeah. You know, but it's, uh, it's it's a disgrace that that's still the case going on. Like, um, I haven't seen as much of the old kind of sectarianism. Yeah, you know. So, so you're you're not you're, get, you're not is still pulling away. You're not out in the wing getting you Fenian so and so, or you Catholic this, or you Irish that. I haven't heard too much, but to be honest, right. when I'm playing, I I, I'm, I don't hear much of what's going on. Mm. Yeah, I hadn't realised that about the racial abuse. Was that a teammate of yours or opposition or? Yeah, one of the lads playing with us. Yeah, right. it's just it's just not on, you know. It's just it's just wrong that someone who's just trying to go enjoy his football, mm. play a game, is uh, is getting that kind of abuse. And what uh, ethnicity is he, Darren? Mars Black. Right. Okay. Because yeah. it's it's interesting. I saw um, Gary Neville was on Monday Night Football last night, and just yeah. in the last segment, they were talking about it and. Neville was making a very interesting point. He was remembering playing at the Bernabeu back in 04 when black mm. teammates were being racially abused. And on the same night, Wayne Rooney had uh, thrown a black armband on the ground in frustration. I think it was for Emlyn Hughes, possibly the black armband. And, and it's funny, at mm. full time, he was more concerned about protecting Wayne Rooney or got more questions about Wayne Rooney than what had happened to the black players. And kind of looking back now, saying how ridiculous that is. And actually yeah. also saying FIFA, UEFA, clubs, powers that be need to come together and decide what the best action is. Is the best action to leave the field? Is the best action to ban fans? What is the right thing to do? Football almost needs to decide how do we handle mm. this if it happens? Because it's difficult. Do you walk off the pitch? Raheem Sterling was saying yesterday, well, you almost empower the idiot in the crowd who shouts something and can almost end the entire game for everyone, ruin the, yeah. the whole point for everyone, but equally it just can't be allowed to happen. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know how you would react if you hear that abuse of your teammate on the pitch it's very difficult yeah you know it's hard and look the thing is no one wants to leave a, leave the football pitch sure you know everyone wants to finish the game you know uh, and as, as probably as you said you know empowering, empowering the idiot mm. you know it gives him a huge influence giving, inf- him, giving, gives, him, giving yeah. him that influence and voice that's, yeah. that he doesn't deserve and mm. you know clearly his ideologies or whatever they are are so far askew mm. that um you know, he has no right to to voice them even, you know, that kind of way. Yeah. Um, I suppose, look, as you say, it just needs to be decided from the top down. Yeah. You know, and I, then you need to have the sanctions and the sanctions have to be followed out to yeah. the letter. It, and I, hopefully that would stamp it out because it's just, it's just wrong. No, it's outrageous. I have no doubt the players, if the players were told the best thing to do is to walk off the pitch or the best thing to do is X, Y or Z, the vast, vast majority of players would be really happy to do that. I think there's actually an uncertainty about how to handle those situations. Even a manager on the mm. touchline, if he hears it, what's what, what's the right thing to do? Yeah, well, that's it, you know. Like, is the right thing to walk off the pitch? If that is the case, then, yeah, walk off the pitch. Mm. You know, play the next game, finish the game behind closed doors or something. I don't know what the best thing is to do, you know. Yeah, it's um, tricky. Do the other 20,000 people have to miss out because this one he just thinks he's bit of a hero and he's having his moment in the sun. I don't know. Yeah. Republic of Ireland then, I would presume one of the big reasons you wanted first team football, aside from just it being your career and not wanting to sit in the stands, is to get yourself into Republic of Ireland squads. You were in the initial 38-man provisional squad for the Gibraltar and mm. Georgia games and then didn't make the cut. Did you have a conversation with Mick McCarthy? Have you been talking to him? Has he been up to watch you play? How's that relationship beginning? Um, 
I haven't spoken to him now since he, he called us kind of when he got the job. I think he was just doing doing the rounds, yeah. calling everyone, you know, and just said, look, obviously, I'll be watching you. There'll be someone to watch you. Yeah, just keep playing away. And, you know, obviously, made the 38-man squad. Was, was obviously quite happy with that. Disappointed not to not to make the cup. But, mm. but that's the game. You know, those lads doing very, very well. Mm. So, from now, I just have to keep the head down, keep working away and keep playing, hopefully, and keep try to get myself back in the frame. That'll be the, yeah. the hope, you know. There's not really much else you can do. You know, you've no power. You're the, the, yeah, uncontrollables. Yeah. You just have to play really well, keep scoring goals, keep doing your thing. It's not like you can text Mick McCarthy every week. No, exactly. And to be honest, I wouldn't want to be. You want to just get in on kind of how you've done at club level and that he sees there's a, an opportunity and a place for you in the squad. Mm. Interesting, Jack Byrne getting the call up, playing League of Ireland football. Uh, Mick was actually at the game. He scored a brilliant goal for Rovers and... I think there was an injury and he got he got called in. That's great for the league. No, oh, it's brilliant for the league. You know, then there's, there's I've been saying it for years. There's, yeah. there's more than good enough players in the league that that could that could make that step up. You know, You're obviously looking Mickey Duffy the last last two years at Dundalk has been unbelievable. Mm. And there's there's far far more players as well who have that quality. And sometimes it's just a bit of belief and a bit of luck, like you say, off the manager. You know, it's obviously it's obviously not the done thing, but it's it's great to see him call him in. So listen, we'll let you go. I guess uh, busy end of the season. Games are going to come thick and fast, and it's about finishing as high up as you can. Yeah, that's the plan. You know, you want to you want to shoot right up that table. You, the aim will be to hopefully get into Europe, and um, fingers crossed we can do that. We're six points behind Aberdeen and Kilmarnock, so we're going to have to definitely pick up a few wins. Well, listen, thanks a million for joining us. Uh, it's great to see you doing so well. Brilliant goals of the weekend. They're on YouTube. If anyone wants to check them out and didn't catch them, keep it up. Great to check in. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks for being here, Joe. See you later.